हेलो फ्रेंड्स डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई नो ऑल ऑफ यू आर एट होम एंड दिस अ वेरी क्रूशियल एंड टेस्टिंग टाइम फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस टू कंटिन्यू द क्लासेस वी हैव चोजन दिस मोड बेसिकली विल बी प्रेजेंट इन बोथ ऑनलाइन क्लासेस एज वेल सम ऑफ द क्लासेस विल बी लाइव क्लासेस ऑल्सो एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वी शुड नॉट डिसकंटिन्यू अवर स्टडीज इफ एनी ऑफ यू आर हैविंग एनी पर्टिकुलर डाउट रिगार्डिंग एनी सब्जेक्ट you can write to us or you can even call us i am going to continue with physics electrostatics as i told you in our regular classes that there are four sub topics basically in this chapter electric charges electric field electric potential and capacitors whatever is happening in this chapter will be repeated in the next chapter current electricity and further in magnetism so from that point of view this chapter is very important for both your isc exams and as well as your uh, cbsc and if you are writing your um, and competitive exams need all ji we were doing electric field in electric field we have taken three cases one is due to a point charge we know the formula is kq by r square due to a ring uniformly charged ring the formula is kq x upon r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 and we have also seen due to a dipole at the axial position and as the equatorial position now we are going to continue with four more cases infinite linear charge thin sheet and thick sheets spheres hollow and solid but before further doing calculations in electric field we need to understand one important concept of gauss theorem and electric flux gauss theorem and electric flux will help us to determine the electric field without making the mathematics more complicated so i am going to start the concept of electric flux so let us see electric flux electric flux is a scalar quantity denoted as phi what is the meaning of electric flux meaning is very simple number of electric field lines crossing a uh, unit area perpendicularly what is important here is the word perpendicularly field lines crossing a unit area perpendicularly let us say this is the area let us say you are taking this uh, board this board you are taking you have cut a small square in this board this board is a rectangular board if you see carefully in this you have cut a small square now which lines we have to count we need to count only the lines which are perpendicular to this surface uh the lines which are perpendicular to the surface that is these lines these lines these lines which are passing crossing this that how many lines are there let us say three lines are passing so flux will become three i can show you another view also let us say this is the surface some surface is there assume like this this is your palm earlier this palm was kept like this and we were calculating these field lines crossing it now we are keeping this palm like this and these field lines because we need to calculate only those field lines which are crossing this unit area perpendicularly so here the flux is how much 3 flux is 3 suppose if we increase the area then flux may also increase let us say here here the flux is how much 5 but only which lines to be calculated those lines which are perpendicular that is the meaning of electric flux number of electric field lines crossing a unit area perpendicularly so what is important here is that if we see carefully how to derive the formula for flux so flux is depending upon the electric field why because if let us say that see observe this observe this case this palm is kept like this this area is kept like this here a square is kept from there field lines are coming field lines are coming means what is there there is a positive charge a positive charge is emanating lines you know a positive charge will emanate line and a negative charge towards that lines will come so there a positive charge is kept if the electric field intensity is more that is the magnitude of charge is more then the electric field intensity will be more because what is the formula of electric field intensity kq by r square for a point charge so if the magnitude of charge is more electric field intensity will be more and if electric field intensity is more number of lines will be more because we have seen in the properties of electric field lines that number of lines depends upon the magnitude of electric field intensity more the value of e more will be the value of or more will be the number of lines so 
phi is a proportional to e similarly phi is also proportional to the area why you see here field lines are same but we are increasing the area if we are increasing the area because of the electric field intensity is same but because of increase in area it will accommodate more number of lines so that is also the case and this phi also depends upon theta depends upon theta why because we need to always take which lines perpendicular lines not any other lines depends upon theta so from here combining all these concepts that is phi depends upon e depends upon a and depends upon theta i am writing phi is equals to e dot a or phi is equals to e a cos theta and that is the reason i am saying that electric flux is a scalar quantity it is a scalar quantity and what will be its unit uh, electric field uh, unit is what newtons per coulomb because force per unit charge into area area means meter square that is the unit of electric flux so electric flux as a you scalar see little quantity. carefully about this a a a is appearing as a vector any yani area vector a is nothing but area vector we need to lit discuss little more on the area vector in physics and mathematics a area till now we were always taking it as a scalar for example area of a circle as pi r square area of a square is a, a square if side is a and area of rectangle length into breadth so area was always taken as a scalar quantity just the magnitude but actually in physics and mathematics we need to take area as a vector quantity and how to take the vector area that i am going to tell you in the next slide or uh, next presentation yeah. meanwhile you can let just us see how to take the area vector for example first let me talk about 2d surfaces because we have both 2d as well as 3d surfaces let us say there is a x axis and y axis a square of side a is placed in this xy plane this is the xy plane xy plane means uh, the plane of x axis and y axis a square is kept here so if we need to write the area suppose here we have to write the area so area is what area of the square is a into a, a square into now into we need to give its direction also because what we are taking area we are taking as a vector quantity now how to give the direction this is the area the direction of the area is always given as normal vector to that area normal vector to this area where is the normal to this area if you see carefully then it is the outward normal normal vector to the area is the outward normal. so where is the what is the outward vector this is x axis this is y axis so outward vector is z axis and what is the unit vector along the outward z axis k cap so i will say a square k cap one more example let us say this is x axis this is y axis z axis let us say a circle is placed in a xz plane if you see carefully this is x axis this is z axis like this a circle is placed here here a circle is placed so where is the normal to this circle upwards upwards means what z uh, y axis upward means y axis so what will be the area let us say radius is r so area will become area will become pi r square j cap this is the area for this circle pi r square j cap similarly so basically what i am trying to say is that we you need to always take the outward normal outward normal for the vector what you have to do is you have to take the outward normal unit vector suppose the outward normal is along x axis take i cap if it is along z, z, x, uh, z axis take k cap and if it is along y axis take j cap similarly we can go for 3d surface let us see how to take the area vector for 3d surface suppose first let us start with the cube it's a three dimensional closed surface cube so here you see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 six sides are there six surfaces are there suppose you want to take the area vector for the top surface so for the magnitude is what a square and area vector any outward normal any upward normal n cap i mean n cap i am denoting is for the normal vector that can be here z cap k cap depends on how the cube is placed suppose you want to take for the downward surface then area to magnitude is same but then downward normal here for this surface here for this surface this is the outward normal you should always take the outward normal as the area vector this is the i mean convention everyone has to follow suppose you are having a cylinder this is one surface this is another surface and one is the curved surface 
for this surface you can take this as the area vector for this surface you can take this as the area vector outward normal for this curved surface you can take the this for this one you can take this so the one which is coming on the top you can take the outward normal one which is going in the back that curve you can take the backward i mean again the outward normal similarly you can take a sphere this is a sphere this was cube this was cylinder for a sphere what you can do is suppose you want to take this as the small surface at da then this is the outward normal you want to take this small surface then this is the outward normal you want to take this as the small surface then this is the outward normal so basically what i'm trying to say is that area is a vector quantity write the magnitude of the area and outward normal normal means perpendicular that is the convention of taking area vector so that is your basically electric flux field lines coming out of surface or going inside a surface but perpendicularly now let us do one thing now let us introduce the concept of gauss theorem and then we will combine the problems of electric flux and gauss theorem why we are studying electric flux so that we can understand gauss theorem and why we are studying gauss theorem so that we can do the problems of electric field what can't we do without gauss theorem yes we can do without gauss theorem also but gauss theorem makes the problems easier so that is why we are studying gauss theorem so now let me let me write the statement of gauss law 